Okay, so in this question, this is from the 2014 paper, and this is what they gave you. It always reminds you at the beginning that you're going to be assessed on using good English, organising your information clearly, and using specialist terms. What they mean by that is basically make sure you're using keywords. We talked about naming the apparatus correctly, perhaps trying to include words like independent and dependent variable. They're not going to remind you to do that. They expect you to think like a scientist and do it anyway. Think about the kind of methods you wrote in your coursework. That's the kind of thing we're trying to do, but quicker and more concise, so a bit shorter. Just putting down the key information and then moving on. This question it tells, it tells us the student investigated how the rate of reaction changed when the concentration of hydrochloric acid was changed. So first of all, they want us to change the concentration of hydrochloric acid. You've got to write a plan the student could use. They've also told us, as a bit of a clue, that this is about rate of reaction. This is exactly one of those questions where you are going to need to read very, very carefully. This is a question where you're going to have to take your time and you're going to have to go over the key information. So, rate of reaction. We've talked about the fact that it's speed. The concentration of the hydrochloric acid was changed. Now, if you've skimmed over the beginning of this question, you might have missed which experiment they're actually talking to you about. Remember, this is 2B. So there's clearly the beginning of the question, and the examiners are not mean. They're not trying to expect you to come up with something just off the top of your head. They've given you a load of clues. The clues are right there at the beginning of the question. A student investigated the reaction between magnesium and hydrochloric acid. They've even given you a diagram to give you some clues to remind you that you've probably seen this experiment in lessons. The magnesium is drawn as a solid, and the little circles represent bubbles of gas. So you've got an experiment that's going to fizz and you might remember and are expected to remember to be honest that that magnesium piece might completely disappear. The acid is in a test tube, they've not labelled the test tube, they do expect you to know the names of the equipment so it's worth having a practice. Remember if the equipment looks like this, it looks like an upside down cone then it's a conical flask but we just call it a conical flask. Okay, if you want to remember it as a conical flask, that's fine. It's an upside down cone shape. Use its name. Okay, right. We've got to look at the bullet points in the plan. We've got the experiment. Go back to the bullet points in our plan. It does say we have to describe how we're going to carry out the investigation. So that is simply a step by step method. Doesn't have to be long, just needs to include those seven things we talked about. You're going to make it a fair test. As soon as you see that word, you should be thinking control variables. Things that I am going to keep the same. And then finally, what word did we use all the way through the first bit of this video? Measurements. What are you actually going to measure? It does remind you. Describe the measurements you're going to make. Good news is, even if you don't bother to read those bullet points, if you follow my instructions, you're going to get full marks anyway. Sometimes they might ask you to include a risk assessment. We'll go through risk assessments and those possibilities in a later video. Right, the seven things we were asked to do. Do you remember what the first two were? It was all about measurements, measuring a time and measuring something about a product being made or a reactant being used up. So you've got a choice. You've got magnesium bubbling. You could choose to measure the volume of gas given off. You could choose to time how long it takes for it to stop bubbling. You could also look at how quickly the magnesium disappears. So you could time how long it takes for the magnesium to disappear. But remember what I said, when are you actually going to start timing? When does this reaction actually start? It starts the minute you put the magnesium in the acid. So that's something we need to consider before we start writing anything. So you notice that this is the conversation that would be going on in my head before I start writing anything down. Then I can go for it. So I'm just going to start off with our measurements. So first of all, measure the time it takes for the magnesium to stop bubbling and we can normally just hedge our bets by saying bubbling or fizzing. Spelt it wrong, one line through it, doesn't matter, there we go. So the first thing I'm going to do is measure the time it takes for the magnesium to stop bubbling or fizzing. 
we've got to say exactly how we're going to do that. So we've talked about the time, we've talked about what we're going to measure, but how are we going to know when to start the stopwatch? So I'm going to include that as my next bullet point. Start the stopwatch as soon as the magnesium is put into the acid. Now, we've perhaps not gone about this in exactly the right order, but this is normal for an exam. You're thinking through, what have I actually got to do? So I'm gonna measure the time for the magnesium to stop bubbling or fizzing. I'm gonna start the stopwatch as soon as the magnesium is put into the acid. I might as well cover my back and say, I'm gonna stop the stopwatch. As soon as no bubbles I'll go over here can be seen right so have we achieved the first two objectives have we said exactly what we're going to measure and how we're going to measure it we've talked about a time we've talked about a reactant being used up we've definitely covered the first two bullet points what about specialist words okay could we include something about our dependent variable we could say that we could say the dependent variable so that's the one we're going to measure, which is what we'd write down in our results table. The dependent variable will be the time it takes for the magnesium to stop fizzing. Right. The third bullet point was all about making sure we've stated exactly what we're going to do. We've done that. We haven't just said measure how long the reaction takes. We haven't just said measure how long the magnesium reacts with the acid. We've actually said exactly what we're going to do. So we're sorted. What was the fourth bullet point? The fourth bullet point on our list was talking about naming apparatus. So if we go back to looking at our diagram, it had a test tube. So, and we've also started straight in with our measurements. So we can always use our command of English to make sure we have got a logical sequence. So before you start measuring, again, this word measure, measure a set volume. I can change that word set actually. Let's use exact. Measure an exact volume of hydrochloric acid and let's give an example, why not? E.g. 10 centimetres cubed, that sounds like a sensible number. And put this in a test tube. Again, making mistakes, doesn't matter. Put a line through it, cross it out. Put this in a test tube. Right, we've named our apparatus. We've already mentioned we haven't we mentioned our stopwatches in there. Right, is there a variable we need to change? Going back to the question, we do need to change the concentration of the acid. So, all we'll say is, add the magnesium to the acid and measure how long it takes to stop fizzing. Now we've repeated ourselves a little bit, but I just want to make sure I've covered my back. I've said exactly what I'm going to do in a, in a logical step-by-step -step method. Out of the magnesium, measure how long it takes to stop fizzing. We've got to change the variable, so we're just going to simply state, repeat this. And again, rather than this, why don't we number it? One, before you start measuring, measure out a set volume of hydrochloric acid and put it in a test tube. Two, add the magnesium. Measure how long it takes to stop fizzing. We've already explained how to do that using a stopwatch. We don't need to repeat it again. Three, repeat steps one and two for different concentrations of acid. To be honest, that would be enough. But why not show this examiner? We definitely deserve six marks. And let's name some concentrations of acid. E.g., let's go for 0 0.5. Capital M for molar is the unit for acid. One molar... 1.5, 2, 
and 2.5. You normally go for a range of 5 for your independent variable. And let's tell them we know that. This is the independent variable. OK, what was our next step? Keep everything else the same. They've told us to talk about... OK, so repeated with steps 1 and 2 for different concentrations of acid. This is the independent variable. What was I saying? Yes, they've told us that we need to talk about a fair test. Keep those control variables the same. So, first of all, we've done our step-by-step -step method. We've described the measurements we're going to make. We're now on to the control variables. So, final step, keep all the other concentrations, volumes and things the same. So, keep the volume of the acid the same every time. Mass or concentration. We can't keep the concentration the same because that's exactly what we're going to change, but we can keep the mass the same, the mass of our magnesium. Keep the mass, and let's even be more specific, mass, size, and shape, be really scientific, surface area of the magnesium the same. We can't leave it for the same amount of time because the whole point is it's going to take different amount of time depending on the concentration of the acid. Right, the final stage we said we'd include is to repeat the investigation. Now that doesn't make it fair, it's not part of our investigation really but why not put it anyway it's going to take you a few seconds to write it and if they're asking you about how you'd make an experiment reliable this is going to do it reliable means repeat the experiment repeat the investigation three times and calculate an average that's it okay that will definitely get you six out of six marks measurements names of apparatus what we're going to do examples of everything we're going to keep the same examples of things we're going to change calling them the correct term the independent variable making sure we're talking about the dependent variable again using our correct vocabulary that's a definite six out of six answer and that's how you write a high quality method